In this lesson, we're going to look at what I like to call helper methods. And those are methods that are not part of the interface, but are used inside the class definition to help you get work done with your class. We're going to look at two helper methods in this lesson. One for formatting the time to where the time is in HH colon MM colon SS or hours, minutes, seconds format. And another one that validates one part of the time, we'll say the hour for this example, and it would extend very easily to minute and second as well. So let's get started. The reason we need a time formatting method is because when we display the time, which I'm going to do here in just a second. Let me add a console read key here real quick. So when I display this time, it displays it 110 instead of 010100, which is what you expect to see in a standard time display. So what we need is a method that will format the time correctly, but it doesn't need to be part of the interface. So the way we do that is we make the method private. And then by making it private, it's only accessible within the class definition. And from there, it's just a matter of writing the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to create three variables, hours, minutes, and seconds, as strings. And then we're going to build each piece of time based on that. So if the hour is less than 10, then our string hours is going to be equal to a zero string plus the hour, and we call the two string method on the hour to turn it into a string. Otherwise, we'll get a data type mismatch. Else, if we don't have to do anything, then we will simply set hours equal to the hour plus an empty string. Let me close the method so we'll quit getting these errors. And now we just do the same thing for minute and second. Notice that by combining minute plus an empty string, I turn that into a string. You can do that using the empty string quite easily. And then finally we have seconds. That should be minute, and that should be second. Then we have seconds, and then an else. And then we say seconds is equal to second plus empty string. Then once we've done that, all we have to do is return hours plus a colon plus minutes plus a colon plus seconds. So there's our method. And we'll put it up here in two string. Let me comment out the old version. And here we'll just return the results of the method call. So now let's go back and look at our program again. We have an error someplace. One extra curly brace that we don't need. So there we go. So let's run the program. And there we go. 110 becomes 010100. So format time is an example of a helper method that we use in the class definition, but is not part of the interface. And again, if I try to call it, when we pull up IntelliSense, you'll notice that format time does not pop up because it's private and not part of the public interface for the class. The second method I want to write, the second helper method I want to write, is a very simple method to validate the hour. It's going to return an integer, and we're going to call it validate hour. Its parameter will be a integer hour value. So here we're simply going to say if the hour or the argument is less than or equal to 23, return hour. Else, return zero. And that's just an arbitrary decision that I've made that if the user tries to set an hour that's not valid, like 200 or negative 5, then just return it as zero. You could flag an error. We're not to the point in the course where we can talk about how to do that. So the easiest way to demonstrate this data validation technique is to just have it return zero. And we can take this method and put it up in our constructor by having it evaluate the parameter passed to it in the constructor method. So now hour is equal to the return value of validate hour with the parameter h being passed to it. Let's go back to our program right here, and let's change the hour to negative 1. 
So what we should see when we run this program is 000100 as the resulting hour. And the fact that we didn't tells me that we need to check and see what happened here. Oh, I see. I was thinking in terms of hours going beyond 23, like 25, in a clock running situation. So what we really want to do is we want to say if hour is greater than or equal to zero and hour is less than or equal to 23. So now let's run the program. This time we see 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So the validate hour has to check to make sure that the hour is greater than or equal to zero since you can't have a negative hour and that the hour is less than or equal to 23 since there's only 24 hours in a day and the last hour that we keep track of is the 23rd hour because once you get to 23.59, when you get to 24, that actually flips back to zero, the first hour. So those are two examples of helper methods and now I believe we're ready to move to the exercises for this chapter.